Hello everyone, this is Ryan from the Profit Trailer team, also known as RF Radio, on the Profit Trailer official support server on Discord as well as elsewhere on the internet. In this video I'm going to be going over one of the big changes to Profit Trailer version 2.1 and that would be the pairs config in the GUI. Uh, since the graphical user interface or the as many call it the basic edit mode uh, is uh, such a huge change I'm going to be doing a few videos on that and uh, giving you a much better overview of how it functions. Uh, so without further ado let's just go ahead and take a look over at the config. So uh, here is my uh, pairs configuration for my uh, test bot on Bitrex. And I just wanted to give you a quick overview here. So this video might be a little bit brief, but I'm going to cover some of the more uh, tangential parts that might look a little bit uh, less intuitive for you. So as, I might have, uh, as you might remember from my prior video and looking at... Um, the general overview of it. There are several components here to the pairs configuration. Uh, first and foremost, this uh, upper left block here. This is your market uh, selection, start balance, keep balance, keep balance percentage, initial cost, or initial cost percentage. Now you can uh, populate initial cost or not if you're not using it. Um, since I didn't even have it populated and I'm only using initial cost percentage, that would still work. Uh, so they don't have to be populated with a zero if you're not using it. Uh, they could just be blank. Uh, so these uh, don't necessarily have to be filled in uh, in order for it to function correctly. Uh, I've been running mine with an initial cost of the field just blank. And uh, that's because when I did it in the advanced config, I just commented it out in order to disable it. So you get the same, uh, I, you get the same function from doing it either way. Uh, to the right of that, you have your triggers uh, f here in the yellow section, so your trigger market, and you can select that across all of the markets available, like all the all the market base coins available for your exchange. Now, this USDT one actually doesn't function, even though it is on the list here. Uh, that's because there is no USDT pair for price rise and drops. So the uh, since USDT, uh, which is Tether, by the way, uh, since that is a stable coin, it really doesn't fluctuate. So you won't see a price rise or recover on that because it doesn't fluctuate. It, it stays steady with the US dollar uh, or within 2% of the value of the US dollar. Uh, so even though it's on the list here on this one, uh, it does not function. So you only really have Bitcoin, Ether, and BNB to choose from. Um, now, this I am running this on Bitrex, and uh, I find it funny BNBs on the list here, but um, that's there for Binance, uh, so that does work. Uh, price rise, price recover, these work exactly the same as they would in the uh, advanced configuration that we've seen in prior videos. Now the BTC price rise, this is percentage, okay? Since I have mine in Bitcoin, so this is a percentage rise, so I have my marked at seven. Um, at a 7% price rise on Bitcoin, it'll go into sell only mode. Uh, and then the price, the BTC rise recover when it drops to only, oops, uh, when it drops to only 6% um, price rise over the last 24 hours, then that will go into, uh, or that will take it out of sell only mode. Uh, then you have the price drop and price recover, they work exactly the same, just in reverse. With the BC, BTC price drop, in my case I have it at 5%, so if it drops in price, 5% goes to sell only mode. And when the price comes back up, so it's only a 4% drop over the last 24 hours, then it cancels the sell only mode. So they work just the same as you would in the advanced config. Uh, you can notice you can click these headings, and it'll actually give you information about these. So uh, if you really want to know exactly you know, what each one does, you can just mouse over and click it and you notice whenever you mouse over the heading uh, you get a little question mark there so that's just a little way if you really if you want to know a lot more about each one of these just click that and it goes and tells you exactly um, what you're looking for or it tells you exactly what the field is for uh, so you have consecutive buy consecutive sell so if you have X amount of 
buys without sells in between, it goes in sell only mode. And likewise, if you have a certain amount of sells with no buys in between, it'll go into sell only mode. So those are your, uh, those are your triggers there. Uh, over here on the left side, this dark green area here, this is going to be your buying strategies, your values, and your limits. And uh, if you remember on the prior video, I did show how to activate and deactivate these. So if you need to add in a buy strategy, just hit the plus sign to activate that line. If you need to remove one, just hit the minus sign to disable the line. Uh, then you have uh, your... Uh, trailing max pairs min by volume min by price right next to your strategies here so you have all your um, it looks like your uh, uh, filters and stuff here so your minimum buy price your maximum buy spread minimum order book percentage all that stuff these are all filters uh, your minimum buy volume and then I'll get, oops, I hit the. I keep hitting these tool tips. <laughs> uh, not quite used to that myself yet, but uh, yeah, this is all your filtering area here, and your rebuy timeout is included in this section here too. Uh, max or buy max change percentage and buy minimum change percentage. So, uh, if you don't remember what these are for, tool tips a wonderful thing here. So, only purchase coins 24 hour percent change is set above the set value for the minimum change, and then max change. Only purchase coin if the 24 hour percent changes below set value. So, this very, very handy little way of uh, learning what each one of these fields does just by clicking on that header. Uh, now, to the right in the red section, this is your selling section here. So, you have your sell strategies, sell values, and sell limits, and these operate exactly the same as the buy strategies, values, and limits, and you can activate and deactivate them using the same plus and minus signs here. Uh, then you also have your trailing profit, trailing type. Um, these are very very nice. Uh, shrink is uh, an interesting one. If you want to, you know, click on. Oh, this one actually doesn't have a tooltip yet for the smart trailing type. Um, but anyways, if you want to learn more about what the trailing types are, you can go to the wiki or you just follow along here, and I will explain these. Uh, so the smart trailing, when you have shrink, uh, what happens is when your price gets above your uh, gain value the trailing value will start to shrink okay uh, and this is a very conservative feature because it what will happen is as your price goes higher and higher and higher your trailing profit uh, value will get smaller and smaller and smaller until it finally when it comes a little just a little tiny pullback it'll sell so I have used this um, myself it does work um, I've actually used it to pretty good effect on some of my uh, trading pairs. Um, but there's the opposite here as well, the grow. This is a lot more aggressive. So it does exactly the opposite of shrink that when your profit percent gets above uh, your gain set or your, your gain sell value, then the trailing value will increase as it goes higher in profit. So you have the potential for higher and higher gains, but at the same time, you have you're waiting for a much stronger pullback in order for it to sell. So that's uh, kind of a trade-off you get there. But it does give open the door to higher gains uh, overall, potentially. Um, shrink is, if you feeling conservative, use Shrink. If you're feeling aggressive, use Grow. It's completely up to you uh, which one you want to use. And then you have your default. This is the standard trailing type that's been present uh, since the beginning of Profit Trailer. You know where it's looking for that uh, peak, and when it comes down the specific amount of trailing profit from that peak price, that's when it's going to sell, and that's that's been uh, standard all along. All along. But uh, so now you have three different types of trailing to choose from. I'm gonna stick with my shrink. I like that one. Uh, max profit. Um, this is your threshold for taking or for taking profit at a maximum level. So if the price hits a maximum profit percentage or whatever you define here, it will immediately try and sell for that profit. Um, then your take profit here. Um, these are all explained in the wiki and in prior videos. If you haven't seen them, I highly encourage going back and uh, going over the Profit Trailer 2.0 pairs um, videos because that details all of these settings here. Uh, but yeah, your take profit. So that's your percentage of uh, profit like that you have to be above in order to take profit after waiting X amount of time under the take profit weight and not having moved by this percentage in that wait time. So that's the little uh, 
simplified <laughs> way of looking at this little uh, take profit mechanism here. So that's got all the values able to be defined right here. Again, if you need to look at um, more detail on this, I highly encourage reading up in the wiki and also going back and looking at the videos on the uh, pairs config for Profit Trailer 2.0 because that is detailed here. Uh, pending order weight, um, this just like it's been since uh, Profit Trailer version 1, this is the wait time for your uh, coins to be pushed from your pairs to pending order log and allowing the bot to rebuy that pair again. Uh, then your your cancel pending percentage. Now this is it, this does have a little bit of different mechanism when using this uh, version here. So your cancel pending percentage uh, is the percent profit level you're looking for before it cancels pending orders and puts it back into the the pairs log in order to sell or I guess this doesn't necessarily um, put it into the uh, cell or the the pairs uh, log in order to sell, um, but it can once it uh, once it reaches that percent uh, profit, it will uh, cancel the pending order. Um, so I guess I would put it back into the into the pairs log. So. Anyways, I'm getting off base here. Any, uh, the interesting way of the, how this works now is you have the option here, this little combined button down at the bottom. Uh, you can combine your uh, pen, your cancel uh, pending percentage or your cancel uh, pending orders, or you can run them independently. Um, so that's this little combined thing here. Uh, so you don't have to combine all of your cancel pending orders on the same percentage. You can have them done in, uh, you know, by coin and stuff like that. Um, what else we got? Okay, stop loss trigger and stop loss timeout. It's kind of self-explanatory. Uh, whatever you set for your stop loss trigger here is going to be a percentage. So you set it the percent drop that you want to see here. It doesn't have to be negative. You can make it this positive number. It'll just say, I'm going to look for that percentage drop from wherever you bought it at before it'll stop loss. And then it's got the timeout that's got to wait in minutes in order to uh, allow buying again. Uh, across the bottom here, we have all these little buttons now. Um, trading button here. Uh, and if you haven't noticed, anytime you make a change here, you do have to hit the save config at the top in order for these to take. So it's not just toggle on, toggle off. You do have to hit the save config at the top here in order for this to be saved. Uh, like if I want to do uh, sell only mode, you notice it goes not saved, so I have to go save config. Um, and if I wanted to save that. So you're trading. This uh, is off by default when you first load this version. So just remember, if you're not trading, come back in here in the pairs config and make sure trading is turned on. Uh, you have your sell only mode, manual off and on function here. And then you also have your panic sell uh, on off function here. Uh, use this sparingly, if at all. <laughs> um, the order book calculation. Now this is if you want to use the order book profit calculation for uh, keeping track of the uh, available profit on the order book um, based on the volume of trading and everything. Uh, so this is going to tell you how much profit the order book can support relative to what you are currently um, showing as your profit um, percentage uh, when you're in positive profit. Remember this for order book calculation, it only shows up when you're in positive profit. If you're negative, it doesn't show it. Uh, and that's on your, your pairs log. Like if we go over here and look at the pairs log, I have one pair here in the negative, so I don't see the, the order book calculation right below it. But that's what, the, uh, that's what this order book calculation uh, tells you. It, it displays that second little profit percentage below that tells you exactly how much profit the order book can support relative to what your... Um, direct profit percentage is and then this fun little last button here this is probably my favorite part of this whole new GUI right here the easiest way to set up a blacklist uh, so you can basically turn these coins on and off right here and hit the save button in order to enable and disable pairs uh, this makes the GUI so much easier to operate I think than the uh, advanced config especially for picking your pairs you can just click it Choose the ones you want, hit save, and done. No, uh, no worries about 
um, you know, having to set up the uh, long list of pairs if you have a long list uh, in your advanced config. Now you can do uh, blacklist, whitelist, or just all. <laughs> um, showing the blacklist, it just shows you the stuff that's disabled. Showing the whitelist gives you the stuff you have enabled. And then all has it combined. So that's a nice little function that you got here at the top. I like to just use it on the whitelist. So I'm just going to save it right there. And then uh, that's really about it for the pairs. If you really want to uh, get really deep into the weeds on what is what on here and how each thing functions, the wiki is a wonderful tool. If you uh, hit the the wiki link like I just did down here at the bottom of, the, of your monitoring screen takes you to the first page of the wiki and if you want to know more about the pairs scroll down on the left hand side until you see these setup files here and you see the pairs dot properties um, but there's also uh, for the GUI go to the web interface guide here under getting started and this will give you the full overview of your web interface guide including the new GUI uh, with the basic config so that is about all I have for this video, just going over the pairs configuration for the GUI. And I'm going to make another couple of videos showing DCA and indicators configs just to get um, a little more detail on how they work. Uh, so uh, we'll also do another video on the uh, extra functions of the GUI, namely the, uh, the, the config switching, how to create new configs, and all that fun little stuff here. Stay safe, happy trading, and we will see you on the next video, which shall be about the DCA configuration. If you need any help with your Profit Trailer client, please consult the wiki at wiki.profittrailer.com. And if you still have more questions, don't hesitate to join us over on the Discord support server following the link on your screen.